Jeff MVP. No, I don't think he's going to be MVP. <laughs> you got to do it like that, Mike. Come on, man. What's up, man? So he's talking about scheme. What scheme are we going to be using on defensively? I think it's you're going to see a lot of 4-3. I think that's going to be an area. I mean, literally, Dan Campbell's talking about it. You're obviously going to get um, a little bit of 3 4. It's going to be mixed packages, though. Maybe you'll have three safeties in there at some point. It's going to be, I say, more 4 3, though. Offense, I'm not 100% sure what they're going to do. I think you're going to see a lot of two minute offense in there. I think he's going to see some more fast paced offense slow down. I think it'll be, depending on the defense, sometimes you'll be passing more. Sometimes be running more. I think it's just going to be game by game decision. What do you think about that, Dose? Yeah, I mean, you know, this is something you could spend all day on, right? Trying to figure it out. But I think you hit on the main points there. Defensively, Todd Wash, I think, put it great. Attack and react is what you expect from the defensive line. We know we're going to be running, walking our Sam up a lot of times in base, but a lot of times you're in sub now, anyways. So that's mainly your base package. Then offensively, to what you said, it's all about the pacing because to me, we talk about the verbiage. I think it's limiting the verbiage. I look back at what New England had going. New England, Tom Brady, where he has a lot of success is it's changing pace. He can. No huddle, you can slow things down because they can understand their concepts, which they said are going to carry over from last year, a lot of similar things with less verbiage. So that's how I kind of look at it. You guys think that home's going to pull any major trades before training camp? Bobo, what do you think about that, Anthony? Do you think they're going to pull? We literally talked about a, a trade right before we went live. A Bleacher Report said, Anthony, do you think they're going to pull off a major trade? Um, it's an interesting question. I mean, for me, Brad Holmes is known as a guy who likes to use his draft picks. I know when he first came here, they said it would take, you know, some time until he started getting into that routine. Obviously, we didn't have many draft picks when he first came. You know, the team was a lot worse than it is now, but they've had two good drafts. And I think for me, if the right player is out there, because obviously we're coming up to a lot of contract renewals. There are a lot of players who are disgruntled out there. If, if the right deal is out there, I would be happy for him to go out and do it. Um, it just depends whether, you know, in his mind, he's at the stage where he's ready to do it yet. I, obviously, we don't know how Brad Holmes thinks. I still think maybe we're a year off seeing some of these really big deals that we're going to do. I think next year, there's a lot more cap space. There's a lot more draft picks as well. I think that's when you'll see the major ones go off. But if, if the right opportunity appears, he will not say no to it. So I wouldn't definitely say no. But I think it's all likely. If we miss your question, just repost it, copy, paste it. We're going to miss it. There have been a lot of questions coming in. That is what it is. I want to hear this from Dosa Dion. When do you project Malcolm Rodriguez breaking into the starting lineup? Man, he could be in there very soon. I think you're going to come in, like we said, we're going to come into Alex. I mean, Alex Anzalone is going to start. I think Derek Barnes probably is, you know, the front runner to start alongside of him. But so many sub packages. Malcolm Rodriguez's ability to play like that, being a former safety, it's get him on, get him on the field a lot. So if you mean starting by, hey, he's taking a first rep or, hey, he's on our base packages, we'll see. Maybe that's something that comes after the bye week later on in the season. But just finding a way to get on the field, it's going to be hard to keep him off the field. And he made a great point. The guy forces fumbles. He makes plays in terms of he can pick it off. He's a great pass rusher. He just brings too much to the table where it's going to be hard to keep them off the field. I think you're making a mistake. They're not afraid to let the rookies play is what Aaron Glenn said. So this year, he's going to get in starting snaps, I think. I think you'll see him on packages, but him predominantly being on defense, I don't see that happening unless there's an injury. I think you're going to see Ans alone. I think you're going to see Board out there. I think you're going to see Derek Barnes out there, but you'll see packages. They're going to take it a little bit slow. I wanted Derek Barnes last year to play week one. I felt like he, you know, he had a high potential, but they, it took a little bit of time for him to really get playing time. That's just kind of what they go. Uh, but uh, I see you'll see him on special teams, I'm sure, right off rip. To see him on third down, I think that's what Malcolm Rodriguez is really good at, so maybe they'll have some packages out there for him. But to be a full-time guy, like he's going to be Alex Anzalone, I think it's, it's going to be a while. You know, that could be unless there's an injury, in all honesty. Go ahead, I don't Anthony. know. I mean – I, I, I don't know. I think you might see him sooner than sooner than later. But for me, you know, Dion mentioned it. It's how they utilize the players here. Barnes got utilized wrong last year. He's a blitzer. You know, his job is to get into the backfield and cause problems. And they used him in coverage a lot, which is not his thing. For me, with the linebackers in general this year, I just want to see them be uber aggressive. If you're playing three safeties, you've got plenty of protection in your backfield. Send the guys forward. You know, Houston is a blitzer. 
Rodriguez goes after running backs. He's a blitzer in a way, but you know, I, I'd have Rodriguez in on the running downs, the obvious running downs, the first, second downs, and then bring Barnes in when you need someone to blitz. For me, I'd like to see something like that. Play these guys to their strengths because they might not be, you know, every down starter straight up, but they all have their own speciality. So you've got to utilize them that way. So, you know, if he plays as well as he does, and they've, you know, um, Kelvin Shepard's already come out and said, look, he's got the maturity of a three year starter. You know, that's how much he has adapted to this team. They said they're quite happy for him to let him to learn the schemes on his own because he's that clever. I think he'll surprise a lot of people, but with the group of guys we've got, we've got specialists for every down. So I want to see them all mixed in there, really mix it up and use them to their strength. I think we'll see him very soon. I think first three, four weeks, we'll see him in there quite predominantly. No trade for commanders. Uh, so I did a video on... Um... The commander's <laughs> defensive tackle right then and there. And the Bleacher Report did a trade scenario for the defensive tackle for the commanders. The Detroit Lions would be giving up a second-round pick, Michael Brockers, for the 25-year-old. Uh, and would I make the trade for a second-round pick? I like to keep my picks personally. I wouldn't do it. We're talking about this in the back end. And uh, I personally want to do Would they do something like that? I don't know. Brad Holmes is, he's made trades. We know that. So it's really hard to tell what he will do regarding trades, but he's done Trinity Benson. He traded up from 32 to 12. He traded for Jared, the Jared Goff trade. So, I mean, this dude's a trader. And uh, we're not talking about a bad trader. We got Dose's hand going up. Mike, who are we talking about? I'm sorry. I don't know who we're talking I just, what defensive tackle? Deron Payne. Yeah, Deron Payne. You oh, didn't know the okay. 2018. So, oh, you didn't see that ar article. So, I didn't yeah, see so, the article. I was like, dang, a second round pick? This dude better be a baller. <laughs> second round pick. He's a beast. I think he's good. But to give up that type of capital, I just I would rather draft my players. I'm just all about the draft. And that's my thing. Panel, do you think Malcolm Rodriguez is a future all-pro linebacker, all-pro special teamer? I Look, man. I don't know, man. <laughs> I I just just I say be wait time for him. You know, I to, for this guy to go into the the Hall of Fame this year and do All Pro. I think that's definitely a reach, a huge reach right now. It took a little bit for DeAndre Levy to be DeAndre Levy. You know, to be a Micah Parsons year one is extremely difficult. Um. I, so I'm not going to do that. Do you think since we have a great pass rush, their secondary, they'll get more picks? Yes, I do. I do 100% agree with that. Plus, you got Kirby Joseph and Elliott back there. Better defensive. When you have a really good defensive line and you can get pressure on the quarterback and they're not sitting there doing two, three reads, you're going to get turnovers. That is something that we did really good in 2014. Glover Quinn back there. We're getting pressure up front with Indomit and Sue. We were doing all sorts of good stuff. We kept getting turnovers, Dos Dion. We going to get some more turnovers this year due to our defensive line? Yeah, I look at, like, when we were successful, when we started winning football games after the bye week, you saw our turnovers kick it up. You know, it was like the entire – up to the bye week, you had, like, four turnovers. And afterwards, it was like four weeks we had four turnovers. So we started to pick it up, and we saw that last year. I just want to make a little point here when we talk about Malcolm to Anthony's point. Look at a Micah Parsons, right? They put him into a position where it's like, well, that's what he's really good at. He rushes the passer really well. And I think when we talk about defensive line and how this affects D linemen and scheme changes, it does affect the linebackers too. It's a different idea for what these linebackers are going to be asked and it's what Barnes was drafted for they had a vision for Barnes they had a vision for Levi but now that Trey Flowers and some of these guys are no longer here you can now adjust it to okay this is what our majority our, our guys do well last year we were kind of in a tweener mode and we had to adjust a little bit as the season went on yeah for sure and again I'm going to miss your question folks just repost it I'm not being a prick I'm not trying to ignore you a lot of questions coming in and we got some good guys here in Anthony and Dose uh, doing some some answers when do you think that Williams will start I'll say I'm gonna just go off rip and say weeks after the bye week so what week seven I think we we're bye weeks week six I think that's when he starts what do you think about that Anthony when do you think that Williams is going to come in for the Lions I'll give the honest answer here I've no idea because I don't know the severity of the injury obviously there's a very big um difference in narrative between the player and the team I think the player's raring to go and wants to go and the team are obviously going to take it very slowly with him. But 
you know, I, I'm probably with you. I reckon we'll probably see him after the bye week tight. But, I mean, if this is a guy who, who can heal his injury quickly and he wants to get in that team, that, that is kind of sort of the passion and the drive you want to see from your players. So if he comes in early, then I'll not be against it. But it just feels like the injury he's had, the recovery time frame, it'll not be for week one. 146 watch and we only have 52 likes. That's by Lions Rumble. He says, like this stream up. I agree, man. Definitely like the stream up. Appreciate you, man. Thumbs up, just like Dose just says. Hashtag lines from Joe. I love the wide receiver core, but Hawk, Cephas, Chark, Williams, all injury history. What do you guys think of the probability of this core staying healthy this year? Are we optimistic? Oof, Joe, man. Damn, I think we're all kind of with you on this one. Like, we're nervous. Dose, are you, like, how are optimistic that all these guys stay healthy? All those guys he listed there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th- you know, <laughs> he's a good point. You know, Hawkins is missing time. But you got to look at the – I think you got to look at the injury history and see if it's repeating the same thing. And then also take a look at the situation that these guys are in. I look at Cephas, the injury he had last year. I don't think it's going to keep coming back. Chark, I'm a little worried about. He's had an ankle injury multiple times. Jamison, again, I'm not maybe as worried about that one. And we talk about, you know, he's just got to recover in terms of strength so you can utilize him the way you want to. But we will have injuries, and that's why it's a good thing that we have the depth we do this year. Will the See, Dion just stop. mentioned it then. That's, that's, the big th- that's the big thing this year. We have depth. You know, we have guys who we can bring in to replace them and not have to rely on them so much. We didn't have that luxury last year. We had to play Hawk all the time. We maybe had to play Swift through a bit of injury, etc. We don't have that problem this year. So I think they're going to be able to manage them a lot better and the injuries will be a lot less. That's the good thing about having depth. I got it. This is a tough question here, and I'm going to have a good answer for this one here. Will Lions try to stop Gronk from retiring so we can sign him and help the tight end position? Mark Orham, what do you think? Yep, that's kind of what I agree as well. <laughs> I don't believe <laughs> Gronkowski is not going to be a Detroit Lion. Fan. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have better better shot um, getting struck by lightning five times in one day than him coming here he literally refused to trade from the Patriots a couple years back he said I I thought... come to the Lions I was like oh Mark's here man <laughs> oh, oh man oh god yeah he's not coming here man and Mark he had the perfect answer he truly did do you think we need a second bye week you know what, man? I'm going to say, yeah, why not? Because you're making this season 17 freaking weeks long. Why not do another bye week? I mean, especially if you're a team, you get a bye week early on, like after week four. That's a rough stretch for you, man. What do you think about that one, Anthony? I agree. I think, you know, it is, it's unfair that teams will benefit from a bye week more than others will, just based on where it's located. Obviously, we as Lions fans over the years have suffered – enough bad bye weeks and I mean you can say is that why we've been having so many injuries because we've been having the break early and we've been having to grind on through an elongated season without a break and yeah I'd agree totally have one say weeks you know yeah spread two out one for the first half of the season one for the second half of the season look after your players more and the injuries will go down Perfect, perfect.